Today, medical advances that would have seemed unthinkable just 10 or 15 years ago are being driven more than ever before by technological innovation. We live in an age of possibility. Innovation and discovery continually expand our understanding of the human body at the cellular and molecular level. They've led to seemingly miraculous cures for certain types of cancer and other life-threatening diseases. In a recent breakthrough, we now have a vaccine that can prevent malaria in children, and of course, vaccines against COVID-19. At AMFAR, we have long understood how innovation and collaboration go hand in hand. AMFAR scientists work together wherever possible, sharing data, insights, and ideas. The AMFAR Research Consortium on HIV Eradication and the think tanks that bring the best scientific minds together to problem solve and strategize are two good examples. While innovation produces new tools and technologies, collaboration is the engine of progress. Yet in spite of our progress, HIV AIDS remains one of the most deadly public health threats of our time and we still have no vaccine and no cure. It's true that in some parts of the world, infection and death rates are down, but progress is uneven. And in many countries, HIV is on the rise. After 40 years of research on HIV, we know a tremendous amount about how viruses work. That knowledge and technologies that have been developed along with it enabled us to produce COVID vaccines with astonishing speed. And that knowledge will help us prepare for new viral pandemics that scientists tell us are certain to emerge in the future. Today, nearly 30 million people with HIV are living healthy lives thanks to powerful drugs that keep the virus in check. And I'm proud to say that AMFAR had a hand in developing many of these drugs. But for the last 15 years, we've shifted our research focus from treating HIV to curing it. And what's remarkable is that to date, at least five people have been cured. The latest cure, the City of Hope patient, was announced in July. He follows other patients in Berlin, London, Dusseldorf, and New York. These cases have all resulted from stem cell transplantation, a high-risk procedure that's only an option for people living with HIV who are diagnosed with certain types of cancer. But each case increases our understanding of what a cure for HIV could look like. We've long understood that there will be no eureka moment that heralds a cure. First, we'll learn to cure some of the people some of the time, and eventually, over time, most of the people most of the time. So we stand on the cusp of a historic medical milestone, a cure for AIDS. The challenge before us is one of technology, and we must rise to the challenge. It's truly a matter of life and death. With enough commitment and the right investments, we can overcome this challenge. A cure for HIV would signal the end of a plague that has already claimed more than 36 million lives. And it's within our grasp. Each day, we're inspired by the courage and vision of those who led the way. Dr. Matilda Krim, Elizabeth Taylor, Michael Gottlieb, and others who 40 years ago launched a desperately needed AIDS research program in the face of terrible suffering and government indifference. We're inspired by the activists who blazed a trail in the early days of the epidemic and by the selfless volunteers who participate in clinical trials. And we're inspired by the dedicated scientists whose ingenuity and hunger for solutions drive the research onward. Their work is made possible by our generous donors around the world. Their generosity, your generosity, will sustain this historic effort and bring us to the finish line. I'm confident that with your continued support, we'll make AIDS history.